everyone to all our viewers from all around the world. A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on your time zone. Welcome to the 13th virtual panel discussion hosted by America's Reluctant Photographic Arts Society in Los Angeles, California, USA, a member of the Photographic Society of America, PSA, and the International Federation of Photography of Art in France, FIA. I'm your host, Medini Ratnayaka. We are streaming live from Los Angeles, California, USA, and connecting with our panelists in Los Angeles. This week, we hope to discover the inner workings of international photo organizations and photographic institutions in Southern California. We have a well-accomplished personality with us today to enlighten us on this topic. Let us meet our panelist, Ms. Joanne Stolte, president of Photographic Alliance of America. Joanne has honorable PSA, MPSA, EFIAP and ESFIAP designations. Joanne Stolte has earned the photography distinctions MPSA and EFIP. She was the general chair of the Southern California Council of Camera Clubs S4C exhibition from 2001 through 2017. She's a respected international judge serving at the Welsh, the Great British Small Print Circuit, Photophera, PSA China, Beijing and Takeshi, Polish, the Holland Circuit, Giawin, DM, Vietnam, and AC Photo, and Maitland, Australia, and Varadinium, Romania. Joanne served on the PSA Board of Directors as the membership vice president from 2005 to 2010, and as the information systems president from 2010 to 11. Joanne is the chair of the Southern California chapter of PSA and the news editor of the PSA journal PIT. She chaired the PSA nominating an international understanding through photography IUTP award committees. She's a trained PSA portfolio assessor and has served on the PSA portfolio committee since its inception. She develops the PSA portfolio online course and instructor trainings. For her exceptional service to PSA, she received the President's Award in 2009 and also elected Honorary Member on PSA in 2018 and received the PSA Volunteer Award in 2019 and the PSA Teaching Award in 2020. Joanne is the president of the Photographic Alliance of America, PAA, the National Photography Organization for USA, which is an operational member of the International Federation of Photographic Art, FIAP. She is the FIAP liaison officer for USA. Joanne has been awarded the ES FIAP for excellence of service to FIAP. Joanne is also the PSA International Partnership Emissary. Good morning, Joanne. We warmly welcome you to our panel discussion. And we are very honored to have you here with us today. And we are very much looking forward to learning a lot about international photo organizations and also about our local organizations in Southern California. So the flow is yours. Take it away. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. And I'd like to welcome everybody from around the world and locally and let you all know that in Southern California, it's not only very warm, not only do we have fires, but we woke up in the middle of the night with an earthquake. So um, we have shake and bake and a lot of other little goodies. Um, I am going to, as introduced, talk about several organizations and I've put five logos be below. These are the ones that I'm going to concentrate on today. Now, it's confusing. Look at these logos. A lot of them have P in it. Well, wait a minute, photography, that's what we're talking about. But look at this first one over on the left. This one's local, it says Southern California. This one is PSA, it's worldwide. This one says Southern California, it's local. 
This one says international, it's international. And then this one is national. So it is a little confusing, but here it'll get even better in confusion. This one on the left, the members are clubs, photo clubs. This one, PSA, the members are both individual members and organizational members, so clubs and councils. This one in the middle is a chapter and its members are individual members only. This one, FIOP, its members are the national country organization, photo organization for that particular country. And then we'll get into some other things. And then over here, another national organization. So let's start with the very basic, and that is the club. Because all over the world, we have some kind of clubs. And nowadays, they're starting to call themselves photo associations, photo guilds, um, photo groups, um, or other kinds of names. Camera club used to be a name, but it's now more about photography than the, the actual camera itself. But the club and their individual members do have available to them many services, and they can participate in many activities, locally, nationally, and internationally. And I want to make sure that those of you who are listening who are part of either this club, this club, or other clubs, take advantage of all of these services and activities. So I have prepared this specifically for the America Sri Lankan Photographic Art Society of Los Angeles, but I will address my remarks to anyone who might be at some other place in the world. Let's see, do I need to change the button down here so that, ah, is that the way to, okay. Uh, now, those five organizations we're gonna go over today begins with the Southern California Council of Camera Clubs. And some of you might want to take notes or at least um, work on uh, or look at, um, you know, the URLs I provide for you. The Photographic Society of America will then be next. I am having trouble moving this around. Next, we'll talk about the Southern California Roundup chapter. We call it the SoCal chapter. And then next, we will look at the International Federation of Photographic Art. And finally, I don't think this is working, the Photographic Alliance of America. Okay, so to begin with, let's look at clubs. What is the basis? I'm going to take this, I think that'll, is that get, yeah, that'll hide it. Um, photography or camera clubs. They are all different, totally different. Mainly organization activities, meeting size, communication. But let's look at it, organization. They may be um, uh, very structured and the board meets all the time. It may just be a couple of volunteers who run the club. It may be one person. So the organization is totally different from one club to another, from one region of the world to another, from one region of a country to another. The activities are different. There are clubs that only do field trips. They might meet someplace and drive together. Uh, they might meet at the location and then have a meal together. Um, there are clubs that just do studio work and they might set up each time they have a meeting. Uh, it's more like a workshop and they bring the studio lights and set it up. It may be for models, it may be for still life, it may be for animals. Uh, they bring in birds or domestic animals, all sorts of things. Maybe that they just do programs and have a speaker come in. Maybe that they just do competition or have somebody come in and evaluate images. Now, most clubs have some combination of all of those activities. However, um, 
nowadays, because of COVID, almost everything's being held virtually. So whether it's the meeting is now virtual, but then the activities have gone mainly to programs that are now done as webinars or image evaluation, which is done via Zoom. So meetings have been certain ways, but there's a lot of clubs that already hold virtual meetings and did before this. In Southern California, there's a club in Palm Springs area in the Coachella Valley that always had, uh, we call them snowbirds, people who go um, up north in the summer and then live down here in Palm Springs area in the winter. So they always had virtual meetings for half of the year for their members. The size of clubs is different. There have been clubs that have been formed just of four or six people to be able to enter in. PSA puts the size into a small club or a large club so that um, it's fair when they compete in things like a newsletter or website competition. Ends on used to be written, printed newsletters for years, and then it became websites and Facebook. Now, the one thing that is a constant is all clubs evolve. They change over time. Change is a definite constant. And it may be as the administration of the club changes. It may be forces of nature, like with COVID. It may be with technology as we went from having slides uh, to going digital. Now, photography and camera clubs do have two things in common. Everyone I've been to, wherever I've been in the world, they all have learning in common. They all want to share information. There's very few individuals in photography, particularly in clubs uh, that are members of these uh, groups that do not have people who want to share. Now, some are better at it. Some can do programs, some can do workshops, some are just um, a little quieter, but they'll work one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And the other is camaraderie or friendship. The friendships you make in clubs and around our mutual passion of photography is just fantastic. Then clubs can join the Photographic Society of America, PSA. So they get a club membership. Now PSA has two kinds of membership, an individual membership and an organizational membership. And a club would get an organizational membership. And the club representative then helps the individual members of the club to participate in PSA activities as a club so that's like inter-club competitions. And the club represents to members to become a member of PSA. Okay, so that, that gives you a little bit of an idea. One thing I'd like to mention here is we talk about the organizations I'm going to talk about today have membership. And that means some kind of form of dues is paid and someone becomes a member. Sometimes when another language is used, the word affiliation comes in. Um, a club can be affiliated with a camera store that supports them or with a school where they're doing something, something to teach youth about photography. But membership is membership and you either are a member or you are not a member. We're not gonna really look at affiliation at all or use that term. So the first organization is the Southern California Council of Camera Clubs. And we call it S4C for short. Up north, there's the Northern California Council of Camera Clubs. And it's out of the greater San Francisco Bay Area. Down in San Diego, there's the Southern California Association of Camera Clubs. Okay, what is different about this as compared to a single club or your club. Well, S4C is also a member of PSA. It is a PSA member council. And S4C members themselves are clubs. So your club is a member of S4C. And that's because 
all PSA members, member clubs, can be members of S4C at no additional cost. There's no membership fee. Now, in many areas of the world where there are club organizations, whether they're called a federation, an association, um, or a council, um, they might have a fee for clubs. But in this area, if a club is a PSA member club, then they are that club is automatically a member of S4C at no additional cost. So there you are. The America Sri Lankan Photographic Arts Society is PSA member club and an S4C member club. Now, the member clubs are listed and linked on the S4C website. One of the biggest things that S4C does is they conduct monthly competitions from April through, from, excuse me, from October through April. So this is we're, perfect timing. We're in September for the club to enter in October, beginning in October, and then enter throughout, or for individuals in the club who want to enter S4C at no charge, now is the time to get started. Perfect timing. Now, there are, as I mentioned, the competitions for clubs called interclub. And the club would start at a certain level, or the club could enter beginners in one level and more advanced photographers in another level and enter two groups of people if they wanted and then the individual club members can enter on their own, but all for free. Now what happens is the individuals, whether they're entering through the club and or entering as an individual, they learn the definitions. What is a nature image? What is a photo travel image? What is a monochrome image? What is a creative image? What is a photojournalism image? What is a human interest image? All of these have specific definitions. Then also there's the definition of all of those subjects, those categories where manipulation and enhancement in Photoshop and other means is allowed, like color, mono, um, mainly the projected image division for PSA, and color and mono for FIOP, but then the traditional categories for FIOP are called um, uh, reality-based for PSA. Those cannot be changed, except a few little things like straightening a horizon. So learning those definitions is one of the biggest reasons to participate in S4C. So the biggest thing I'd like to Suggest and let's put a big star beside this one. Here's the star today is please go and get a uniform entry number, a UEN, and I'll show you the website in a minute so that you can then receive S4C notices, which would be uh, emails, and it's only a reminder once a month to enter and that kind of thing. And you need the UEN, the uniform entry number, in order to enter. And I will show you where that is, but put that down on your list right now. UEN, going to do that today. Now, S4C also then holds an end of year competition. So all of the top scoring images during the year, those that got awards and HMs, are entered into the end of year competition. And then the best judges from around the world. Uh, judge those, and then S4C holds an annual banquet the first Saturday in June. It's held at El Manser Court in Rosemead because there is a very nice room there with no windows. Don't have to go and darken the windows or anything. And there's a very nice lunch, and it's also the installation of officers and um, the presentation of honors at that time. Um, I had hoped that we could um, we would have one this year and. Uh, you know, invite your club, however, um, because you are a member club, however, um, we were not able to hold it 
this year. So let's hope that next year, everybody from the club can come. I mentioned S4C does award honors. The A S4C is the associate, the F is the fellow, and then there's more. Uh, and this is something you, uh, by doing service and by getting awards and HMs for your photos in S4C competitions, you earn points and then the honors are awarded for those points. Now, S4C sponsors, just like your club wants to sponsor, and we sponsor a PSA recognized. Now that's a word to remember because FIOP calls it patronage. So there's two different words. PSA recognizes a big contest, an international contest, and FIOP provides patronage to a big international contest. So the one here that S4C sponsors is an international exhibition of photography. And in 2020, this year, it is a circuit. It just closed this past Monday. So all of the entries were in. The judges are just scoring now. And then next week, there will be video conferences held for each section where the judges will select from the top scoring images the awards. And that's done by Zoom always. Now, S4C also participates in the annual PSA Councils Challenge, because remember, S4C is a council. This past year in 2020, and what I did was, because I put the uh, entry together, uh, we look at all of the top scoring images during the year of the council and what did well at the end of year and I enter 10 images in color, 10 in mono, and 10 in nature. And S4C came in out of all councils from around the world and federations and you know all other groups of clubs from around the world. S4C came in second in color, came in second in mono, third in nature, and second overall. So we're a pretty good group that you might want to be part of. Notice here, since your club is so active in nature, if just some of your members entered and they, those images did well, then you would be helping us and maybe we could move up in nature. Sure would be nice. Now, this is something else to write down. Write down s4c-photo.org. Okay, have you written that down? S4C-photo.org. That is the website for S4C. And this is what the front page looks like. So here's the S4C logo at the upper left, some images that won in an, um, an annual um, uh, event, the navigation across the top. And if you look, and at here in the navigation where it says member clubs it brings you to the list of member clubs and if you look down what do we have here but a s l p a s and that is linked so it's blue and underlined so it's linked to your website so that people coming here who live in the area can find a club and if you want to look at other clubs that are in the council so that you can get to know them, they are linked here. So it'd be very easy for you to then go and, um, you know, look at the clubs. And when you're on their websites, you know, just find out exactly um, what is happening with them and who their leaders are. Um, I'm going to go back because I want to show you. Look down at the bottom of this homepage. See this line here, member of an S4C member club? Yes, members of uh, the club are members and you need a UEM, click here. So this is where I'd like you to be clicking today and apply for your uniform entry number, okay? So you've got the URL. Now we're gonna go on to the second of our organization. So if you've got any questions about the council, S4C, write them down so we can answer them at the end. So now let's look at the Photographic Society of America. 
PSA, which is a worldwide organization that is a nonprofit organization for anyone interested in photography. And there are members from all over the world uh, in over 80 countries. So it isn't 80, it's over 80. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, that means individual members and organizational members, which can be clubs count or councils. Now, PSA is known for establishing and implementing a set of standards for the conduct of international exhibitions of photography, which are called PSA recognized exhibitions. And in other parts of the world, these exhibitions are called salons. So I mentioned PSA recognized before uh, because the S4, the, yeah, the S4C exhibition is PSA recognized, but this is some of uh, the history of PSA. PSA was founded in 1934, so that's over 80 years old. Um, and uh, the members are casual shutterbugs, very serious amateurs, and professional photographers. Um, some members of PSA, Ansel Adams was a member of PSA. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, um, let's see, um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the there's a stamp for somebody who is a very well-known uh, member of PSA um, over the years. Uh, but people like George Lepp and Art Wolf, um, who are known, very known today, uh, nature photographers are members of PSA. PSA originally started as a, a, an organization of clubs in the US. And when they wanted to in, uh, have membership for individuals, which is now the largest part, um, they changed the name to the Photographic Society of America. Okay, now the individual and photo organization memberships in PSA are $45 a year for a digital membership. That means instead of getting a hard copy of the PSA journal mailed to you, you get it um, you get a reminder when it comes out on the first of the month, you get an email. You can click on that or you log in and you can see it there. When you join, you can see all of the PSA journals. I think it goes back to like about 2000, I don't want to quote. It goes back many, many years of PSA journals, let's say ten, the last 10 years, are all online. So even if you weren't a member the last 10 years, if you join now, you can see all of those and you can refer to them. There's a search organ there, so you can search all of the past journals also. Um, now, it's less if you join for multiple years. So let's say you join for three years, then it's only going to be $40 a year. So yes, it's 120 at one time, but it's $40 a year. And you'll be amazed at, wait till you see this now, the numerous benefits. First, as I've been mentioning, the monthly PSA journal, which you will be able to reference uh, when it comes out each month. Uh, there are articles written by and for PSA members, but there's a lot of regular columns, like a column on new technology or a column on uh, new um, software things like that. So many things in the PSA journal. So you can, and there's a sample PSA journal that when you go to the PSA website, you can look at that so you get an idea of what's in the PSA journal and what you'll be getting every month and what you have reference to. Then there are online photo galleries, many, but one of the first things you can do is to make your own member gallery with your own headshot, a little biography, about you, whatever you want to say, what you've done in photography or what you did in your professional life or are doing, um, and six images. But there's a lot of other galleries online. But please, when you join, make your member gallery because we will then link it here. Okay, there is an image evaluation service. So let's say you're thinking of entering a nature competition and you're wondering, does this fit the definition? You submit that image. The evaluator will get back to you and say yes, or say no, or will, they will give you 
uh, hints like, why don't you crop this so that the story is being told better, the behavior that's being shown shows better. Then there are study groups, and there are study groups in nature, in travel, a lot of ones that come under the open category um, with color and mono. So you might find a study group just on tabletops or still life or all sorts of things. And there's so many groups. Um, I think there's almost 200, 250 groups in the different divisions of PSA. Um, there's in the projected image division, there's two major groups. One has about 100 groups and that's called digital dialogue and the other are the PID study groups. So there's just tons of them. And each has about six or eight people. There is an administrator, and each month, somebody puts, each person in the group puts in an image. The others um, make comments and suggestions, and then there's interaction between the author and the others with all of those images. And then the next month, you do the same thing. Okay, then there's online courses. So there are courses you can take, uh, you sign up for them. One is on image analysis itself. Um, uh, as mentioned in the introduction, I'm working on a revision of the course on how to make a, a portfolio. Uh, and there's just a lot of those with a lot of different instructors. Then there are webinars. And right now during this COVID time, there's a webinar almost every week on different topics. The email goes out to members. They are not done openly on either Facebook or put on YouTube um, or put on um, uh, uh, what's the other one. Uh, uh, they are closed. So all members get an email. The members register and then the members log on and see and hear the webinar um, I, uh, with the person and um, then um, then it is recorded and it is in the members only area of the PSA website. So it, it's a very fine benefit. There's also competitions. There's a free competition for members on por portrait photography, on, uh, let's see, uh, creative photography, um, on audio visuals. Then there's nature competitions. Um, there's travel competitions. There's so many different topics. And then there's interclub. Then every year there is an annual photo festival, except this year. It was supposed to have been in Colorado Springs this next weekend. However, uh, it, that is being moved to, for two years from now to 2022. And next year it will be in Grand Rapids, South Dakota um, for the 2021. A photo festival about this time. Then there's opportunities for recognition of photographic achievement. So if for PSA, that's called ROPA. So if you think of recognition, photographic achievement, that's ROPA, R-O-P-A. And that starts with the QPSA after your name, which is for qualified. But you also have an opportunity for recognition of service, and that's PSA honors, and then there's a lot of society awards, like the one that I got this year for teaching. There are opportunities to teach if you like to teach. There's opportunities to mentor others. There's opportunities to write for the PSA Journal. A lot of people locally have written uh, articles. And then, of course, we share that here. Ways to share your photo knowledge. There's discounts on photography-related products and services. And then there's attendance at chapter events. And we haven't you know, mentioned that yet. So far we've mentioned the council and we've mentioned, and so now for PSA, here is the website, psa-photo.org. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? For the chapter, or for the council, excuse me, it was s4c-photo. Dot org. So in a way it can be confusing, but in another way it can be simple. Okay, so if you go to psa-photo.org, this is the home page of the PSA website, and this was taken uh, not that long ago, so it kind of looks like this today. If you're thinking about joining, I'm trying, here's my cursor. 
you can click on this thinking about joining where it goes through a lot of the benefits that I just went through and you can click on uh, some links there. Otherwise, see this gray bar here? You can become a PSA member today just by clicking on that and then what you want is individual rather than organizational member because you are an individual. Um, if anyone would join today, um, there is a place where it says who referred you. Please put down 091334, which is my membership number, which gives me credit. And I am four um, new members away from reaching 400. And I would very much like to reach that, um, what do you call it, that uh, uh, level. Okay, now look at this up here where it says clubs and councils. And if you look to the left, you'll see that chapters are mentioned too. But clubs we've talked about, and you have a club, and council we've talked about. So if you click on that, then down below you can see all of the different services. There's a newsletter contest for clubs, a website contest, the youth showcase you can participate in by having young people participate in a competition. Um, there are division interclubs. For that, you need six images by six different makers three times a year. Three times a year. So that's a total of 18 images, but only a total of six people if you wanted to use the same six people. Now under this inter interclub, look at there's an interclub in color open, in creative, or not, it's not color open, it's projected open, so that would be color or mono. This is creative. There is a, a nature, and I see no reason that your club should not enter nature here. So the same images that you may want to enter in S4C, you can enter here, and you can have the same person entering them. Then there's photojournalism, photo travel, um, there's print, there's 3D, and all of that, and then there's a calendar there for you to look at. So we're going to go on. If you've got questions about PSA, our second organization, try to jot them down so we can look at that at the end. But now, as I mentioned, and you can see up in the left where it says chapters, PSA does have chapters, and there is a chapter right here, the Southern California Roundup chapter, which is located obviously in Southern California. Now, PSA has chapters only in the USA. They are a part of PSA. They are not a member of PSA. So chapters don't pay a membership fee to PSA, and the officers of the chapter are taking a PSA position, and the chapter does report to the chapter's chair of PSA. Now, the chapters are also um, very different. Every one of them is different. But individual PSA members in Southern California are automatically Southern California chapter members. Our chapter does not charge membership fee. If you're in another part of the country, um, there's a, two chapters in Northern California, the Gold Rush chapter and the Buena Vista chapter. There's two chapters in Florida, um, there's a chapter in Wisconsin, another in Chicago, a couple around the New York area. There's a lot of chapters, and they may have dues. But the one here, if you're an individual PSA member in Southern California, you're a Southern California chapter member. And we send out information about our events to all in California, PSA members, and to those in Arizona and in, uh, or in Nevada, excuse me, there is an Arizona chapter. And our chapter has a full day event of photography programs at various locations. And that says around Southern California. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that before I converted it from um, you know, keynote to PowerPoint, but of various locations around Southern California. 
And when you look at the chapter website, you'll see a map of where they've been. The next one is planned for Saturday, March 21st, 2021 at the Hilton Garden Inn in Palmdale. Now, it was planned for this March and obviously we had to cancel it, but everything has been moved to this next March and hopefully we will be able to hold it. We're not sure. If we are, Hazel Meredith, who lives in Tennessee, uh, she does some webinars and teaching, but she will be here. She's going to talk about two things in the morning, HDR, the natural look, and then her second topic after a break will be textures turn ho-hum into a work of art. In the afternoon, our speaker will be Sandy Wheaton, and she's going to speak on from a, being a corporate stiff, and she worked in the Detroit area in the auto industry, to being a globe-trotting photographer on Route 66. And uh, she's going to share some of the best places on Route 66 to photograph. Now, this is on that Saturday. But on Friday, the 20th uh, of March, we have photo walks um, around the greater area. And a lot of people come up and go places on their own. It is the time of the poppies in the Antelope Valley in Lancaster. And we've got to pray for them today because the Bobcat fire has just gone, breached the uh, top of the mountains and is coming out on the other side up there. Um, we're going to have a field trip to Ransburg, which is a living ghost town. There's a few people who live there, but a great picture taking, and that would be on Sunday. So a lot of people stay over at the Hilton. We have reduced rates there, um, and, uh, you know, everybody had registered last year, and we had to uh, cancel all those reservations, but they've guaranteed us the same rate this next year, and it was very good. During this meeting, we give recognition to new members. Uh, we have event volunteers that we recognize, those who travel a long distance we recognize. We usually have guests of PSA officers and our chapter officers and we recognize them all. We have display tables and some event special offers. Sometimes somebody will offer a, a certain uh, field trip at a very reduced rate if you buy it right then or pay for it right then. And then we have a drawing at the end of the day. Now, online registration, uh, we did not uh, reimburse everybody last year. We just kept it, saying we were just moving it over. You know, if we can't have it this year, we'll decide whether to reimburse or to move it forward. Nominal mm -hmm. fee. Um, area members share on the chapter, because remember, this is the third group we're looking at, and this is the local PSA chapter, they share. So if you make a PSA member gallery, then you let me know, we'll make sure that it's up on the chapter. That way there's over 90 there now. When I give you the link to the chapter website, you can go there and look at the galleries, and read the bios of 90 PSA members in this greater Los Angeles area and get to know them and then say, I'm gonna make a gallery too. Okay, you can follow the chapter on Facebook. This is probably the best way to follow what's going on. We do not send out mailings. We send out an invitation uh, to the chapter event, a reminder to the chapter event, and that's it. Everything is basically on Facebook or on the website. So search, and you can do this right now if you've got your phone with you or your tablet, search for PSA and then Southern. And if you're a photographer by that time, it'll come up California Roundup chapter, like it, like the page, and then you'll be seeing things that we post there all the time. And what is posted are um, PSA members galleries. If, they pub if you publish a photo or you get a photo award, doesn't have to be a PSA photo award, any photo award, and other photo accomplishments and activities. Tell me and I will post them up there so that everybody gets to know what's going on. Now the, whoops, excuse me, the chapter, that was very pressing, much too hard. The chapter also enters the annual PSA chapter showcase. So we started with the council that enters the PSA council challenge, 
Then we talked about PSA, and now the local chapter of PSA enters the chapter showcase. Um, interestingly, in 2018, our chapter received first place in overall points, and Haley, an image by Kathy Newman, who lives in um, uh, the Antelope Valley and is president of the Lancaster Photographic uh, Photography Association, that image was selected best of chapter and best of showcase, and she got the gold medal for 2018. So I mentioned we do have some pretty good photographers here. Okay, so now here's your next URL. And you will see this is a little different because it's not PSA-photo like we had for the PSA website. This is PSA-SoCalChapter.org. Okay, so get that down, make it a favorite. And when you get there, here is the front page of the chapter uh, website. You'll see galleries there. When you click on galleries, you will see all of these galleries and you can click on each of those names and see at least six images, the bio and the headshot. Now, also on the chapter website, the annual event is always described. So here's the Hilton um, Garden Inn and you can see over here, the PSA Photo Festival is there. There is a gallery here from the previous chapter event and then news is put up. So this went up um, area new members the 1st of September, and you can click there to see August new members. And then a local member had an article in the PSA journal, and these local members got honors, um, and somebody here got a teaching award. Okay, now when you move on, um, if you click on that, um, the event here, red, you see, Here's everything about the event for this next March, and here's the two speakers and all the information. Now, if you also look at the top right of the chapter website, you will see a little blue Facebook square. So click on that and like that because that's how you will get communication. And here is the, uh, a picture from the last uh, event and you would see um, different things, like this was uh, just posted a bit ago, and it's about um, a, a FIOP um, award ceremony that's coming up. So there's a lot of information about each organization coming up. So now that leads us into our fourth organization, or FIOP, the International Federation of Photographic Art. Now, why is it F-I-A-P? if you say International Federation. Well, that's because it was originally in France. Uh, and so it, the original name was Federation Internationale de l'Art Photographique. And so that's where it gets the FIAP. But we say in English, the International Federation of Photographic Art. And FIAP is an international nonprofit, just as PSA is. But for FIAP, the members are national photography organizations, and they are called operational members, or OMs. So FIOP has its legal seat now in Luxembourg. Okay, so that is the legal seat for FIOP, and that changed um, some years ago. And presently, there are 105 countries that belong to FIOP, and that means the country organization, the national organization, is the member of FIOP. And FIOP is on all continents except Antarctica. Now, FIOP is the only international photography organization that's recognized by UNESCO. FIOP is managed by nine members of a board of directors who are elected by the operational members. So the operational member, uh, like the one for the U.S., uh, has a liaison officer. I'm the liaison officer for the U.S. I will go to a Congress this year. The meeting will be held uh, via Zoom, and there will be an election, which is held every two years. Okay. 
Uh, right, that's, this is the USA FIOP operational member and liaison officer. So for FIOP in the US, the Photographic Alliance of America, or the fifth organization that we will be talking about, is the national, the country, operational member of FIOP for the USA. PAA members, and I was asked this earlier this morning, that is PSA member clubs and their members, so the members of those clubs who are PSA members, do access FIOP via the PSA liaison officer, which is no more than one. Okay, and now why would you want to do that? Well, oh, well, before we get to that, yeah, let me look at this. This will help. Yeah, the, the, that'll be in the next section. Okay, FIOP also has individual membership, but for FIOP, Individual means a club membership, and it's called an IL, and that IL in French would be individual club. So we call it an IL FIOP, and your club is an IL FIOP. You pay 100 euros a year for that. Now, the IL FIOP clubs can enter the annual FIOP World Cup for clubs which comes up in the fall every year. This last year, uh, I was one of the judges. It was held in Florence, Italy. Uh, the judging was in November and your club didn't enter. So the, one of the benefits of paying this 100 euros is that you only then have to pay 50 euros to enter the World Cup for clubs rather than 100 euros. So really try to put that on your list of things for this next year because yes the club is an IL FIOP. Now to get to the FIOP website it's FIOP and now because this is um, in another country it's not dash org it's dot net and if you use this one the forward slash ENG gets you to the English version. However you can just do FIOP dot net and with that, you can then select your country. So this is what the FIOP website looks like at the beginning at the front. Here's the logo and the name. They have five pictures that rotate, but this one is there one in five times. Uh, if you look at the top, here's access to the FIOP book. And this is where you would click to change it English to another language. This is how you can access the FIOP web page. And if you then click here, the little menu, you get these things. So all about the FIOP biennials, the FIOP World Cup for clubs that I'm hoping the club enters next year. Here's your list of FIOP approved salons. So that means an international exhibition or an international salon that has received FIOP patronage. Then, whoops, can't find the cursor. There it is. This is the Master FIOP, which is a, a distinction, a uh, very high distinction. Um, there's information there, and you can see the work of past M FIOP recipients. Then there's the Best of the Best, which has to do with participation in the previous year's um, uh, exhibitions. This is the FIOP News, which is a journal type of publication, which is only online and comes out quarterly, and you could click on that and read it. Here's members. So what's listed there is the country organization. So the Photographic Alliance of America and USA would be listed there. Here's the FIAP Board of Directors, the past presidents, service directors, exhibition centers, which are around the world, and I'm really hoping we can open one in the US. And I know I, I talked some time ago about whether or not there'd be a, a way or a place at UCLA, but it looked like it would be very, very expensive. And then Congresses, which are like the meetings, photo meetings, and then other events. Okay. Now, recently, at early spring of this year, FIOP held the We Stay Home competition. 
um, and uh, it, they asked for images. And I, I did put this up on our PAA website so that you would um, be able to enter. Um, images taken while you were staying at home because everybody was locked down. And uh, we had several people from the US, not as many as I would have liked, enter. And three images from the US were recognized. And there were not that many, it was a hundred and some odd that were selected to be in this um, uh, grouping of We Stay Home images, but three from the US. Now, the FIOP We Stay Home award ceremony will be next Saturday, September 26th. And during that award ceremony, um, 30,000 euros will be donated by FIOP to the Jenner Institute in Oxford, England. And the director will be there to receive this gift and uh, be recognized for what they're doing for COVID research. So as part of this ceremony, um, or part of this contest, um, there was this, the plans from the beginning for this donation. Now, FIAP is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year. So I mentioned that PSA was founded in 1936. Well, FIAP was founded in 1950. So look how nice and easy that is. 1950 to 2020, it is the 70th anniversary. And to celebrate that anniversary, there is now another competition. It is open to all photographers. So anyone listening to me now, wherever you are in the world, it is limited to pictures taken during this year, but please enter. So if you want to celebrate FIAP's 70th anniversary, enter the world in 2020. I don't know if any of you have seen, but Time Life for years, would do pictures from the year and you would buy the Time Life book. It's kind of like what that was, pictures that document this past year, which has been an amazing year. So they are then considered traditional images or with the PSA definition, it would be um, reality-based photos taken in 2020. It is open to everyone, no restrictions. You can be a full-time professional who right now isn't taking people on um, uh, photo workshops or photo tours, and you can enter. The entry is free. However, it is a FIAP patronage salon. Here's its number, 2020-505. So anything that is entered if you are looking for getting FIOP distinctions, your acceptances here would count, and it's under Luxembourg, so that would be the country that would count. Here is the link, but it is linked on that website that I gave you for FIOP. So now we're gonna go to the fifth and final organization, and that is the Photographic Alliance of America, which ties right in because the Photographic Alliance of America, PAA, provides specific services for PSA member clubs and the members of those clubs who are individual PSA members in the United States of America. PSA does manage its own services and activities um, and the PAA member clubs through their club representative elects the executive committee, that's every two years, and the executive committee elects the liaison officer. The services are of two types, mainly. There are other services, like I mentioned, the World Cup for Clubs or developing an, a FIOP exhibition center, but there's mainly two services. One, the services leading to PSA members in the USA receiving photographic distinctions from FIOP. So this would be like the first one is the A FIOP, the associate. The next one is the E. And on the website, all of the, it's totally explained how you get these distinctions. And I'm the one you would work with. And I'd look forward to working with so many people in the US, anybody who would want to find out whether they qualify or not. The second major service leads to PSA member clubs and councils in the USA, as well as PSA chapters, 
obtaining patronage from FIAP for an international exhibition of photography that the club, council, or chapter will sponsor. Okay? Now, photography clubs in the USA that join PSA, like your club, are automatically members of PAA at no additional fee. And the services of PAA are benefits of that PSA membership for PSA member clubs and for their club members who are individual members. That's why we want to make sure that your individual members of your club join PSA. Now, the PSA member clubs in the USA are listed and their club website uh, is linked um, on the uh, PSA website or on the PAA website, excuse me. So now let's go for one more um, URL for the fifth organization. And because PAA is housed, the PAA website is housed on the PSA website, you would go to psa-photo.org forward slash index dot php question mark home dash two. Or let me show you a little simpler way. If you go to the PSA website, which remember is psa-photo.org, and then you look in the navigation, and along the navigation you find PAA, standing for the Photographic Alliance of America. And if you click on that, now notice that this is black with burgundy at the top, which goes with the PSA logo. Once you click on the PAA logo, you get to a website within a website. You'll see the uh, flag at the top as a banner. And now you see everything about the Photographic Alliance of America. And if you then click on about, one of the things um, will, under about, you'll see the executive committee, P FIOP, or P PAA member clubs and FIOP. So member clubs, are all listed here and if you click on California you will see your club there because your club is a member club in the USA of PSA and therefore a member of PAA. Now PAA also has a Facebook page and this is where most of the information is shared. So please today here's another red star yeah, as I mentioned, the photography-related activities of PAA and FIAP and their leadership are posted on this page. So things like this upcoming contest that's free would be there. And announcements and deadlines regarding PAA and FIAP activities, such as when you have to submit for distinctions, which actually distinction registration will open November 1, the packet and will close on the 10th of January. Packets will be sent out to everyone, and then you'll have to, if you've registered, which means demonstrating you are a member of a member club, you are a PSA member, and that you live in the USA, which means you either are a citizen or you have permanent residency status. And so that's what registration is for, is to go through that. Then you get the docket, uh, the packet in the beginning of January, and you're finished by March 31st, and then I submit. Um, in uh, first of April. Okay, so if you would please search and like Photographic Alliance of America uh, so that you can get to the website or the Facebook page, excuse me, and like it and follow what's going on. Now, another way you can do this is if you go to the PAA website and then click on that uh, Facebook symbol. Okay. The Facebook symbol at the top is for PA, PSA, because this is within the PSA website. But if you go to the inner PAA and click on that Facebook page, it will get you to um, the PAA Facebook page. And again, when you go to that Facebook page, you will see uh, the flag banner and um, a lot of things like the We Stay Home ceremony that's coming up is uh, mentioned there. So folks, 
I know this has been a lot of talking and a lot of words and not the usual beautiful pictures uh, that you so enjoy and we all enjoy in a usual photography webinar. But I'm looking forward to many America Sri Lankan Photographic Arts Society members participating in PSA, the SoCal chapter, FIOP, and PSA, PAA activities uh, beginning this year. Uh, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. Um, well, I, I actually wrote there beginning today. Uh, and uh, I'm open to ask, answering questions. And I'm going to uh, close this out. Thank so you very have much. Questions? Thank you very much, Joanne. So, uh, and we are very, so, uh, very, very grateful to you for walking us through that insightful journey. We learned a lot about the International Photo Organization and about the uh, Southern California organizations that our members can get the benefits uh, from. So I do have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that would be very, very applicable to a lot of our, our viewers in the audience. So this is a question that um, one of our members posted. Uh, this is a, uh, and this is regarding the PSA Southern California Roundup chapter. Annual full day program uh, that's going to be held on March 20th. How can I register for the program registration? That uh -huh. is the first question. And uh, also, I think it will be helpful for the audience if you can clarify the schedule a little bit. I know you touched on it during your presentation or it continues for several days as I saw in the presentation. So that's, okay. that was the question that okay. we thought would be very beneficial for the entire audience because we have so many Southern California members watching this. Right. Um, first of all, uh, an email will go out to all Southern or all California PSA members. So if you're a PSA member, which I'm hoping you will become, you will get an email letting you know when the event is coming up this year. We usually send that out uh, November, December to say registration will open right after the first of the year. It's usually the fourth or the fifth of the year that registration opens. Now, because we already have some registrants from last year, we already have a lot, but we will open it again for new people who uh, did not register last year. Uh, the room that we have up there is large enough, even with some social distancing. Uh, they gave us a very good opportunity on the meeting room where we were going to be in one. We're now actually in three with the doors open. So we will be able to social distance, but we still don't know if we can hold it. But that is, So an email will go out uh, and registration will open, let's say the 5th of January. And then registration goes right on through till just before. So let's say it might close the 18th, 19th, 20th of March. So there'd be all that time. We always say that originally it is one day of meetings. So we have the meeting room at the hotel with two speakers, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, awards, uh, some things like that uh, on the Saturday. We always have a field trip on Sunday. So people who have driven a distance stay over. Uh, last year, we went to the Paris train station. One year, we took a boat trip out to um, uh, one of the, um, one of the uh, islands, one of the Channel Islands, uh, and, and climbed that. I think it was to, well, one of the Channel Islands, took a boat from Ventura. Uh, one year, um, we went to the San Diego Zoo because we were meeting in Encinitas. So Sunday, we always do a field trip. On Friday, we always have several walkabouts, and people sign up for those. So that's on Friday. And this year we had two workshops. They're both full. Uh, in the morning, it's uh, macro. Now I'll be asking everybody again this year, do you want to stay with it? And if somebody drops out, we can get them. In the morning, it's a macro workshop. So uh, using your macro lens and little flowers and little other setups in a room. And on, in the afternoon, it's with Hazel Meredith doing hands-on with some of her textures and things like that. Now, most people do go up and we always put on that web page other things you can do. There's Vasquez Rocks, there's St. Andrew's Abbey, um, 
there's, um, uh, let's see, Saddleback Butte State Park, and there's the poppy fields. So there's also, oh, and there's some graffiti on a street in Lancaster. So we always give those things. So some people come up and they park an RV and they do that on their own, or they come up and they stay at the hotel a couple of days. On the Saturday, we're walking across the street to a restaurant, which I'm hoping we can move it now to have outside lunch. Uh, it was going to be on a salad and soup bar, but they may not be able to do that anymore. I'm going to have to find out. But uh, that's, you know, that you pay on your own. Okay, so that's registration, and I hope that gives a, a clarification. But if you go to, um, let's see, psa-socalchapter.org, click on the event. It's really spelled out there. And if you don't understand, then, you know, contact me. If somebody still has a question, you know, please give them my email address and be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Joanne. So once again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really appreciate your contribution to our panel discussion series. And uh, thank you so much because uh, the entire audience uh, that we had today, and as we uh, publish this on YouTube as well, uh, will be uh, benefiting from this information. So thank you. Uh, Suri, can we share with the group what our next panel discussion is going to be so we can give a sneak peek to our audience about the next discussion, which is going to be on October 3rd, Saturday, uh, same time, uh, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 8 p.m. Sri Lankan Time and 3.30 p.m. UK Time. The topic is Exploring the Natural World, Vanishing Biodiversity and Untapped Potential of Our Natural Resources. And we are going to have two panelists, Dr. Gautami Virakon and Dr. Sewandi Jayakodi. Um, that will be uh, discussing that very important topic in our panel. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and enjoy uh, your coming week ahead. Um, we want to make sure that we always mention this uh, because we have a wonderful audience from all around the world. Stay safe and be well, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.